Right, sorry for my long absence, but I've been quite busy. But anyway, this is a very important video in my opinion. I kind of missed this somehow. It didn't seem as big of a launch as I'd expected it. But then when I typed it in, it did actually come up quite a lot. And, like almost all the cycling publications have it. So what we're talking about is SRAM Apex Axis. Now, I've been a long time critic of SRAM, having just had a lot of their products fail. The latest one was the Blip Box. Um, they always warranty it, which is fine, but it, like, it is a bit annoying. However, I actually think they're the only group set manufacturer who's doing any innovation. Uh, and I'm going to get onto that in a minute uh, because I think well, I went through Campy Wireless. That was useless. Basic copy of SRAM. And Shimano just have no answers to SRAM. Now, what SRAM are doing, I think is very clever, is they've gone all in on Axis, basically. Okay, this does have a mechanical. But since Red Axis has been launched, they literally stopped production, sorry, development of any mechanical group set until this one. Gone all in on wireless because they know people love wireless. They People love electronic shifting and it sells. And I think by going fourth tier, they have just blown Shimano out of the water. Shimano just turned up with 105 Di2, which now looks useless. Okay, it's really heavy, but we'll get onto that in a minute. Um, so first idea, it's one by only, which I think is not a massive issue because if you really want to go two by, you can do it. You can just buy a force from Met. Uh, but I do think that it's kind of a clever thing because most people who buy this bike, if it's going to come stock, one by is fine. Like if you're just getting into road cycling and you're not racing, one by is definitely fine. Um, so again, the other thing that's really good is that the Apex cassettes can fit on a standard Shimano free hub body. Again, you, okay, you miss out the 11 tooth, uh, the 10 tooth, which I think is not good um, in general. But, you know, obviously, if you're just riding for, not for racing, it's not as much of an issue. But I think that makes, again, the cross compatibility really good. Um, it's also cross compatibility with mountain bikes. You can see it has an 1150 tooth as well. So actually, at the moment, you're just like, okay, this is pretty mega, to be honest. There's no, no reasons it's down. You can also try and, if you have an XD driver body, you can see here, you can also run it. So it is actually like pretty decent. Again, the chains are all compatible as well. Okay, they're all they're all the annoying square ones, but you know that is it is what it is. I think at this level, you know, all, all those like it's kind of better access when you get down the level. Like if you're paying so much money to have this slow chain on red, it would be annoying. But I think at Apex is actually pretty mega. Um, and then you get out to a forty six tooth chainring, which I think is decent. Um, to be honest, and like, um, but I think they said it's only forty or forty two. So. You know, you're not going to have the biggest gear to push. Like a 4211 is pretty small, for sure. Um, again, if you're getting into cycling, it's not it's not unreal. But I do think it's like a massive increase just having wireless shifting um, at like the fourth tier. Um, and then they've, again, because it's kind of a gravel group set, maybe they've changed it. So it's a bit more, a bit of a wider Q factor. Aesthetically, it looks okay. Um, I think it doesn't look unbelievable. Um, they're just going through some stuff here. Like here's the rear derailleur. Okay, it definitely doesn't look top tier, but I do think at the end of the day, does that really matter? No, it's electronic. Um, and yeah, that's pretty good. They're also saying that the the wireless shifters are better. Um, sorry, the shifters have a better battery life, which again, is kind of not a massive issue because they do show you when they're going to run out of, uh, out of charge. Um, so anyway, again, the, the levers have got a slightly different shape, which I think is what people are expecting. Red to look like as well so you can see what apex mechanical looks like compared to rival and apex are so slightly different um again we just keep going through there's there's the mechanical and um i'll talk about the mechanical one now i think the mechanical one again is really useful if you're actually trying to buy one by specific group set for like cross for example mechanical just impossible to find so having this 12 speed but also should reduce the price because the price of the, the old apex and and rival um, mechanical group sets were absolutely ridiculous. Um, hydraulic disc brake only, just not a surprise. Um, again, and they do have a power meter, which again is wild. Like they've got a power meter at this level. It really is changing quite a lot of people's expectations. You can also do a flat bar as well. So you can see here, uh, this is like, I reckon a real nice setup. I mean, probably most outrageous hybrid bike you've ever seen. It's got zip through, through S's and electronic shifting. But I think this is kind of the future. Like in 10 years time, do you think people are going to be rolling around on mechanical gears? No, like everyone's going to go to um, electronic, which is why I think this is actually such a big step forward. I think the only disadvantage really is just like the price of these bikes kind of goes up. The electronic shifting doesn't make, it doesn't really come much cheaper. It's just like a bike will just be like 300 quid extra maybe, but then it will come with, um, it will come with electronic gears. 
Here's the weight. Again, it's, it's really hard to kind of compare weights unless you know off the top of your head how much stuff is. Um, but you can see like the crank set is pretty heavy. 700 grams is pretty beefy. Cassette, again, like for reference, a standard like a Shimano 1130 Altegra will be like 230, no, 250, 280. Chain, you can't say that much weight. Rotors, again, those are those will be quite heavy. Um, the total group set being 2.9 kilos is a lot for sure. Um, you'll see the pricing here. This is kind of the more exciting thing to look at, like how cheap is it? And you think, no, it's 1,200 pounds, which I think is not a mega, mega deal. I'm not going to lie. However, ultimately, it would just does have to come down because otherwise people will buy Rival ahead of it. So I think you're, what you'll see is like, obviously, that's the RRP, but I reckon you'll be able to get it for like six, 700 pounds, maybe, um, maybe 800 pounds, something like that in the future and then it was like that's pretty that's pretty wild pricing and you might say okay yeah you used to be able to get 6800 di2 for like 800 quid and yeah i do agree but it's just inflation's gone mental recently so you just kind of have to accept that prices are going to be more expensive than they used to be however i think in general it's a real promising step forward and i think it goes to show the only people with any innovation as i said before is sram so that's kind of what i want to just mainly talk about now like if you just look at the products that they're coming out with um, in terms of like one by specific group sets, which you can't get anywhere else. No one else does one by specific group sets. Um, and then you're also thinking about just in terms of like the whole uh, Shimano copying people. Shimano has been like last to go 12 speed. It finally went 12 speed under pressure. It didn't really do anything. It was like, okay, here's our 12 speed stuff. We got rid of rim. Okay, the braking's better, but that's about it. And like you just kind of look at what SRAM are doing and you're like, okay, well, they, they went all in on wireless that, you know, they got it from red down to apex within what, four years, 2019, I think it came out uh, red and now it's, they've got apex and what has Shimano done? Okay. They made 105 DI2, but that's probably like, in my opinion, three or four years too late. They had like easily the massive advantage, like in terms of time over SRAM in terms of electronic group sets, yet they still took so long to release 105 DI2. I think that goes to show their role, just lacking innovation. They don't know what to do. And I think the only reason really Shimano work is, is better is just because it actually works better, for sure. Um, and you might say that's an important part. I think SRAM, a lot of people get away with it. I, I think I've, maybe I've had bad luck, for example. But I do think it's kind of like, okay, the SRAM chain is annoying, but like Shimano... For most people, they're not going to notice the chain. Like, they just look at SRAM and go, oh, I can get electronic group set. Mega. They don't go, oh, my chain's going to be slightly slower. Or it's going to be slightly heavier. Like, you just, once you get an electronic bike, it's hard to go back. And I reckon by tapping into this market, they've really done quite quite a clever thing. I expect, like, a lot of people to buy this, to either have on their winter bike or, like, new bikes, like, first bike. Um, you're going to be having electronic SRAM on it. And then once you go SRAM, maybe you'll just, your next bike will be SRAM as well because you'll get into that. So I think Shimano's in real trouble um, in terms of like figuring out what they're going to do with OEM bikes at this level, because there's just no competition. 105 is far more expensive. And also, you don't have anything that compares to Apex. So uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting to see what Shimano do. It feels like um, Tiagra is like just nowhere near this kind of level. Um, and I think it will be, yeah, interesting to see. Obviously, Camino is just completely different, um, like market level compared to this. Um, again, they've done zero innovating. They've gone 12 speed, they've gone wireless, but you know, it's kind of like, well, that's what you expect. Like you're a bit late for that. Um, and so, yeah, I think SRAM, despite a lot of issues, uh, they really do know how to innovate and they do actually come up with new products. Um, so yeah, anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy. I'll see you in the next one.